All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of SpaceX Launch Towers, which is being made by forum user Science Panda, and oh, what a perfect one to look at for my first mod spotlight, now being back from my vacation, as I noticed this one on the forums while I was away, and with the recent glorious SpaceX news, I thought it would be fitting to have a gander at this small little parts pack, which actually adds into the game Kerbal recreations of several types of launch towers used by SpaceX. So let's just jump right on into the VAB and have a look at them, and you will find them residing in the Structural tab where we will find three lovely new launch towers. Now it is only three, so not a whole lot to look at on this uh, particular mod spotlight, but these are very interesting and unique parts, really. When you consider the fact that there are not a whole lot of mods out there that actually add in launch towers. Everyone's so focused on other parts that no one ever really thinks to add in towers, and so we're perpetually stuck with just the standard launch stability enhancers down here, which, though functional, aren't exactly the coolest things. So now we have SpaceX launch towers, starting here with the Falcon 1 launch pad, which if we click that in, and of course zoom out, it may not be the prettiest thing, but you know what, it is a functional launch tower, which does have this top section, has the ability to sort of uh, bend back a bit so that you don't have to thread the needle with your rocket, <laughs> which is a good thing. And yeah, so that will bend backwards. I could show it off in here if we right click, you can do the retract the strong back, I guess is the proper name for it. Uh, but in the VAB, that animation's a little wonky. It looks better out on the launch pad. So we will have a look at that in a moment out there. But for now, Quite a nice little uh, launch tower. Again, not the most beautiful of things, but I do like the texturing on it. You got the dual tone colors there, which is quite cool. And the pretty nice modeling job done on it. You get all the different girders going everywhere. It is quite nice. Now, as for special features, each one of the launch pads has the exact same generator built into it, where it produces 45 electric charge per minute, which is a cool little feature if you do have your rocket sitting on the launch pad waiting for that perfect launch window. You don't have to worry about opening up your solar panels or anything like that. The launch pad itself will generate all the electricity you need. Hopefully, I mean... 45 per minute is a pretty good number, so hopefully you don't need more than that, uh, though maybe you do, who knows? Uh, but yes, and all three of the launch pads have that exact same generator, so uh, that is the last I'll mention it here. But yes, this is uh, the nice little Falcon 1 launch pad. Now, for size comparison of it, let's grab the FLT-800 fuel tank, as this particular launch tower is really built for the 1.25 sized uh, rockets. So, we grab that and pop it in there. That, that is how tall this thing is. One of the double-sized tanks just takes up this little, little tiny portion of the launch tower right here. You still have all this room up here to work with, which is quite cool. Uh, so yeah, all of these launch towers are big and they only get bigger as we move up in size. In fact, even though I'm gonna have to start a new one to get a good look at it, let's just bring the Falcon 9 launch pad in real quick just to show you the size difference between the Falcon 1 launch pad and the Falcon 9. Notice, it's just being dwarfed. <laughs> Look at the thing, it's huge, gigantic. It goes up into the rafters of the VAB, which is just glorious. So let's actually hit new so we can get a proper look at this thing and load it up here. Uh, again, not the greatest of texturing on this thing, but the modeling is just absolutely superb. I love the clamps down here. You got the cool piping going all the way up, all the trusses and girders, etc. It is a very, very cool. I really do like the look of this thing. And uh, yeah, overall, it's just freaking massive. For instance, if we go back downstairs for size comparison, let's, oh god, what's a good big engine here? Or fuel tank, rather. Yes, one of these, the Kerbodyne, why do I always have problems saying that? Kerbodyne S37200 tank. And uh, yeah, it fits 
perfectly. So, yes, this launch tower is definitely made for your much larger, heavier rockets. And again, think of how just massive you can make rockets on this. This is just one little fuel tank all the way down here. You have all that room up there to deal with, which is quite cool. And we only get larger in the uh, launch tower size with the Falcon Heavy. Once again, let's just kind of take a look at it from here for comparison's sake. Now, both of these are roughly the same height. If we do zoom all the way up here, you'll see that actually the Falcon 9 one is a little bit taller because it has that little little tiny tower up at the top but the uh falcon heavy is just much wider bulkier etc so let's actually start another new one to get a really good look at it and of course this one is designed with wider rockets in mind because well it's not just the one little bit of clamps in the center you can see we have just a wide sort of rectangular clamp in area which is, again, made for those sort of larger aircrafts, that, or rockets, rather, that you could build. And this one, of course, being for the wider, so you'd have other tanks on both sides, etc. And, yeah, again, not the greatest texturing, but the modeling is just gorgeous, and you just have so much freaking room to work with. It is quite cool. Now, to one of the downsides about this. The first is this attachment point down here. It is a functioning attachment point, but for a launch tower, uh, it actually isn't um, a decoupler or a separator. So <laughs> you actually do need to put a decoupler or something like that as your first piece down here, attached then to your rocket so that you can actually release from this particular thing. Like if we actually load up, uh, actually, why did I hit new? Oh, no, wait, did I hit? Oh, yeah, I did hit load craft. I'm just stupid today. And go to, uh, yeah, the F1 tower here. There we go. Now, you'll notice on this one, I have no separator or anything like that down at the bottom. So if we go to launch this particular rocket, it's not going to move. It's just going to be stuck to the launch pad. So you do actually have to add something down to the bottom. And here... Here is the other problem with these particular launch pads. You actually do need to physically drag this launch pad all the way down to the bottom of the VAB. If you don't, you have a hovering launch pad or launch tower, whatever you want to call it, which is a little interesting. Still functional. It'll work. But yeah, let's actually show off the animation, though, while we're out here. So for this particular Falcon 1 launch pad, we hit that, and slowly but surely, this will eventually, there it goes, start to slowly go down, and there we go. Then these little prongs here sort of pop out, and we could potentially launch. Now, of course, like I said, we won't be able to, because if I hit space, you can see we have not been able to actually separate from the uh, launch tower, because again, you do need to add some sort of separator or you know, decoupler, something along those lines. So let's revert back to the vehicle assembly building to show off, yeah, the thing where you gotta drag it down. Cause you'll notice we started in the air. Now normally with most crafts, it'll just pop you down to the bottom. But yeah, for some reason, for these towers, you physically do need to drag it down to the bottom. And if we go to launch this craft again, it will actually won't be floating in the air this time, which is <laughs> amusing. So just a small little thing, but just a, a reminder to do that whenever you use these launch towers to remember to drag it all the way down unless you want a magically floating launch tower in the sky. And maybe you do. Maybe that's what you're going for. Who knows? But let's revert back to flight or uh, to vehicle assembly building rather and take a look at the next one that I have here, which is the Falcon 9 tower. We'll load that one, and I actually remembered to save this one at the bottom. And for this one, we actually did put a Separatron down at the bottom, so our rocket can actually leave the tower. And you'll notice just this small, crappy little rocket I built barely takes up any room on this thing. I mean, it takes up maybe, maybe a little bit more than a third but definitely less than half of the entire possible launch area for your tower, which is just, 
Ha, ah, wonderful. But yes, let's bring this one out and show off its animation and the fact that, once again, you need that separator. So let's right click and strong back retract. Now, if I'm remembering correctly, this one actually is a little weird because it tilts back a little ways and then all of a sudden pops down to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it's either this one or the heavy la launcher. I can't remember. Or possibly both. Possibly both. All right, it has stopped. Excellent. We are good. So we have our lovely retracted strong back. And now all we need to do to launch our rocket is just throttle up and fire away. And there it goes. Now, I, of course, built the uh, tower first, so we're stuck on this camera view. But, hey, you know what? That works for me because, of course, we're just showing this off. So let's revert flight back to vehicle assembly building and take a look at the final one, the Falcon Heavy Tower, and load that one. Again, that same sized rocket that I had on the last one just barely takes up any room on this entire freaking thing. It's really built to have much larger rockets in here. But it's just, ah, uh, that just, I kind of like putting a smaller rocket to it because it just shows how gigantic these towers are. And it's just wonderful. Now, this one, once again, if we retract strong back, there we go. Come on, come on, start turning. They're always quite slow, but they do eventually make it. Eventually. <laughs> uh, maybe I... Oh, it must not have taken when I hit it. But there we go. It is retracting. Ah, that's the one that does that. <laughs> I knew it was either this one or the previous one. But yeah, it kind of starts going back and then all of a sudden, boom, down to the ground. But nonetheless, still a very cool launch tower. And uh, yeah, you just have to do the same thing again. Remember to have a separate Tron and remember to drag it all the way down to the bottom of the VAB so that it's not floating in the air. But yes, that is the SpaceX Launch Towers mod, once again being made by Science Panda. And I would definitely say to go and check this thing out, especially if you love SpaceX like I do. It's just another lovely parts pack that gets added into this game which just brings in so many wonderful parts and just a cool new feature that is so little used in the modding community of these glorious little launch towers. So if you would like to check it out, you can take a look at the link in the description as always. And of course, I do hope you have enjoyed this video today and that you do come back for the next when we will be looking at hopefully yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching my friends and as always, have a good one.